What this, what this country is about, and what we are about in this country is this. I mean, look at this picture right here of Kimberly. I mean, this is outrageous. This is outrageous. In order to what I like to say, what I like to refer to as to breathe the fresh air of liberty, this poor child, this poor child is, I mean, whatever happened, just like this thing says, my body, my choice, right? My body, my choice. Where, where, if, you know where that came from? That came from out of, it was pushed out of the women's movement in this country. I like all the women to stand up. There's a bunch of them stand up here. All women stand up in here. All the women. I mean, look at this. If you can see what I can see, look at all the women in here. And I'm going to tell you something. It's, to me, it's about a whole bunch of things. It's about our faith. It's about our families. It's about the friends that we have. It's about treating each other with dignity and respect. It's about making sure that we have a standard of living that we want. I mean, what that gentleman, what Michael just stood up here and said, I mean, he's right. He got off his dead rear end. He's working hard. He's doing all the things he can do in his town. And he said, you know what? I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it. I'm going to get involved. Instead of tired, getting tired of it and backing out, he got tired of it and he backed in. He pulled in. And he said, hey, I'm going to fight for my town, my parish, my community, my county, my state, my country. That's what this is about. We are facing a transition point in this country like we have never seen in our lives. We've never seen it in our lives. If we do anything, if we do anything as people, when you leave here, because there, there's not just people from Oklahoma here, there's people from all over the country. There's, there are, that's right. There are people from all over the world here tonight and all the live streaming, all the podcasts, all the media that's out there. If there's one thing that I don't worry about, I don't worry about the Democrats anymore. I don't worry about the, I don't worry about the left with a capital L. I do not worry about them. And the reason why I don't worry about them, because I know their game plan. I've been to countries that have had socialism or communism. I know what that is like. And it's not something that we want, but it is a transition point that we are heading toward. We are pivoting. Our nation is pivoting. This is an unprecedented time. It is not like 1776. 1776, it was one nation that we were facing. It was tyranny. It was a monarch. And, and the founders got sick of it. At this point in time, we have had both foreign adversaries and domestic, and domestic enemies against us. And we do have them. We do have them in our midst. So what I'm telling everybody today, my, my message to you, my message to you when you leave here today, my call to action, my call to action is you have to get involved. I mean, God, God loved this man, Michael, who just stood up here. And it's, it's not just him. 24 hours ago, I sat down with a man in, in Florida who, in their school, in their school committee, their county continued to force, even though the governor was saying no mask mandate, the school committee continued to force a mask mandate. I mean, look at the results. This beautiful child, this beautiful child. And so what did they do? They didn't send one person or two people to go represent the town, to go into the school committee or the school board. They sent 3,000 citizens. We don't have 10 million or 80 million. We have hundreds of millions of Christians around this country. And hundreds of Christians around the world. And I always tell people that, that, you know, freedom is something that we breathe. Freedom is something that we live. Freedom is something that we take for granted. In order to do the kinds of things that we do, in order to live the life that we live, I mean, the liberties that we have, are, we are a nation built on individual liberties. Individual liberties, individual rights. That's what the Bill of Rights is about. There's a reason why there was 10 in the Bill of Rights. Just like the principles that are in the Bill of Rights, the Ten Commandments that we have are the principles of the foundation of the Bible. And the Bible provides us, the Bible provides us with the fulfillment, just like our Constitution provides us with the fulfillment of who we are as a nation, who we are as a people. And if unless, unless we get our act together, unless this group, because I'm preaching to the choir, I am preaching to the choir, you're here because you are engaged. You know what we need in this country. So you have to go back out and you have to tell your 
mothers and your fathers, your aunts, your uncles, your friends, your community leaders. When people go, I'm sick of those people in, in, uh, in Washington, D.C. I'm sick of the politics. I'm sick of the church or whatever the church is doing or not doing. Well, stop that because it is our problem. If somebody's in, in politics, we put them there. So stop putting them there. Get involved in your community. If you're tired of something, if you are tired of something and you're tired of whatever it is, that whatever the griping that you're doing, it's like I like to say, we have to quit sitting around and talking and now is the time to stand and do. And we have to do. One other thing that I, that I really, and I mean this, and I wish I could give a big hug to everybody in this room and to the, to the people of this country. My family and I went through just incredible, I mean, if you, and I'm not, you know, I'm not one of these preachy people, but I came to believe in, I came to believe in what's called Psalm 23, you know, when you're in that, that shadow, right? Everybody knows that, that valley. And you're by yourself, and thank God that I have the wife that I have. When you're in that valley and you are it, you are all alone, and you're thinking, man, this is not going too well. Things are tough, and you're being persecuted, and you know you're being persecuted, because I'm going to talk about faith in our institutions here in a second, faith in our institutions that we no longer have. So I'm in that valley. I'm in that very, very difficult valley. And during that time, during that time, we could have quit. We could have said, okay. And we knew what was about to happen. The persecution was occurring. It's amazing the, the incentive system that is in our department of just us. It's not justice, it's just us. And it's just them. So what, I, what I'm here to tell you is that in our, in our nation, in our nation, the people of America, you, because so many people have come to me in the last 24 hours since I've been here, and have said, we, we prayed for you. And I'm going to tell you, and I, so I would tell you from the bottom of my heart, from, from every member of my family, you know, we want to just say that first, that prayer is the most powerful weapon system known to man. And, and prayer, that's right. And prayer, prayer gives a voice to the voiceless. Prayer gives a voice to the voiceless. All these people around this country, all these people that are around this country, there's a lot of people out there that have lost hope. Hope, what hope is, is hope is something that you hope for in the future. That you hope that something is going to happen. You hope that this is going to happen. You hope that that's going to happen. But what we need to fall back on is faith. Faith is something that is the here and now. Faith is what I am going to do right now. I am standing up here because of my faith, my faith in you, my faith in the American people. When we say we the people, that means something. When we hear or we read that we are a nation created by a, by a higher being, by a creator. In fact, the word creator is in our Constitution. It's in our Declaration of Independence. So we have to understand what it is that we are about. You have a responsibility. You have a task. You have to go back to your communities and you have to get involved. This transition point is a divergence, meaning we are splitting apart. We are, we are moving on one of two paths. And the, and the path that I want to continue to move on is this beautiful experiment in democracy called the Constitutional Republic. That's what I want to do. But the, but the point that we are at right now, we're looking one way and we're going, are we going to continue down that path? And I don't want you to question that. I want you to do something about it because the other, the other path is a path towards socialism and then communism. That's it. I mean, this is real. This is not a conspiracy theory. This is not some, you know, something that you're going to, a fake news. This is for real. We are facing an element in our country, a small element, well-organized, well-funded, and they've got power. They outsmarted us. They outmaneuvered us. Okay, they did. It didn't mean that we didn't win that election, because we did. We won that election.
That's right. So the people, and, the, and just speaking of Oklahoma, Oklahoma, 77 counties in this state, 77 counties. And all 77 counties, I think it's the first time in the history of the country that all 77 in one state voted for the President of the United States, in this case, Donald J. Trump. All, all these politicians, all these politicians that are marching across stages like I'm marching across this stage right now and that are starting to tout whether or not they're going to run for president in 2024, don't give them the time of day and don't give them a dime. We have a, we have a president. That's exactly right. Until, until Donald J. Trump says what he needs to say about the, the, the future, about where we're going as a nation and as a party, let's say, as a Republican party, although I could care less about the parties. I really could. I, I like to say, and, and as, and as I, I've learned about the people of Oklahoma, I've learned about the people of Oklahoma, and I've learned about the, the flyover countries, right? The flyover countries. The flyover countries are people who are generally conservative, generally Christian, and they have good God-given common sense. Period. So everybody in here, everybody in here today and that will spend time here, thank you for being here. I know on behalf of Clay Clark and, and the people that organize something like this is a big deal. This is a big deal. This is not about the church. This is about our faith. This is about our faith. This is about our faith in God. This is about our faith in each other. This is about our faith in our families. And this is about our faith in our country. That's why I am standing here today. I'm here today because I have faith. And the reason why I'm standing here is because I have faith in each one of you. When we say we the people, that's not just some crazy phrase. It's we the people. It's us. We're the ones that run this country, not Washington, D.C. <laughs> and in fact, and you know this, I mean, everything that I'm saying, people know. And you're going to go back and you're going to talk about it. But what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to figure out what you're going to do about it. Washington, D.C. will not solve our problems. In fact, what we, what we learned is the courts, the judiciary in this country, will not solve our problems. People in this country have to take responsibility and you have to get involved. I don't know how many times I've got to say this. And God help us for these children, for this beautiful, for this beautiful child, this beautiful child, if there's one time that I will get beyond determined and get emotional, it's about the children and the way that our children are being treated. This is, this is not right. This is not right. So take control. If you're griping, if you're griping about all this stuff, what are you doing about it? What are you doing about it? And you have to do something about it. It's like one gentleman that I spoke to about a month ago. He's got two young children. He's, he's done very, very well as a businessman. And he's in his community. He's been seen as a community leader. He's philanthropic. He, you know, he's been give, he gives money to 
different organizations, and he was sitting one day, and he told me, he goes, I was sitting one day on my couch about a year ago by himself in his house, and he said, he's watching what's going on. This is before the election, and he's watching what's going on. And he said, you know what? I, I can't do this anymore. I have to get involved in my community. And so he stepped into a, a in this case, a Republican chair role in a very, very large county in this country. And they have about 250,000 people. And guess what the Republican Party doesn't do? The Republican Party doesn't even care about going down to that county and going into that county. You watch. The John, John Bennett, who just stood up here, who's going to be the Republican Party chair for the great state of Oklahoma, you're going to see that man engaged, just like you saw him up on the stage. Thank God. Thank God he's going to be engaged. And as a veteran, and as a veteran, and as a, as a Marine, as a retired Marine, there are 23 million veterans in this country. 23 million veterans. And I will tell you that the majority of those veterans, majority of those veterans are Christian, they're conservative, they love this country, they know what sacrifice is about, they know what discipline is about, and they know how to serve. They know how to serve. So for all the veterans out here, for all the veterans out here, encourage others around you. Teach people how to serve. Teach people what it means to serve, to serve others. This is, this is that important of a time in the history of our country. This is an unprecedented time. This is a time we have never been in. We can make all these analogies about different eras about our nation, whether it's 1776 or the Civil War or World War I or World War II or all of the, all of the difficulties, all of the challenges that our nation has been through. And I will tell you that they were all challenging and they all caused us to reflect on who we are as a nation. Who we are as a nation are a group of people, a body of people who are willingly willingly sacrificing our lives for others around the world. Not to, not to like impose something, but to, to help them, to help their lives and to make them better. That's what we are about. The beauty of a soldier, the beauty of a soldier in combat is to be able to be engaged with the enemy in a direct firefight on one hand in one second and then in a brief moment reach down because a child's in harm's way, grab the child, pull, him, pull this child into his chest and turn turn on, on, on fire that's coming at him and take a bullet for that child. That's the American spirit. That's what every one of us has. If, I'm, if I am preaching, it's, I'm preaching about America. I'm preaching about our country, about who we are, about every single aspect of why we are here today. There are those, there are those, I mean, is anybody six feet apart? <laughs> right? I mean, the number, yeah, the number, the number of people, the number of people that we know, I mean, all these doctors, I mean, this is a, you know, a health and freedom festival. It is about an education, and it's not just for the the thousands of people that are in here, this is really for the millions and millions that I know are going to get this message across not only the United States of America, but the world. And the message is, we are not done fighting. We are not done fighting. That's right. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish up here because I, this has been a long day. A lot of, you've, you've heard a lot of things. And, and so I hopefully, you know, there's a difference between hearing and listening, right? You hear noise, you listen to words. And so hopefully you haven't heard a lot of noise here today. Because we can, we can transmit a lot of noise in today's environment. An awful lot of noise. A lot of distraction. A god awful lot of distraction. But what we need to do is we need to listen. And I learned one thing 
from, one, from a great gentleman who's here today, Lynn Wood. Lynn Wood taught me one day. He, he's a great, great American, great American. I mean, I love him. I love Lynn Wood. And all, all the things, all the things that you learn in the military, all the things you learn about leadership, you know, there's things in life that you can control. I can control what I'm saying. I can control the fact that I'm standing up here. And then there's things in life that you cannot control. And then there's a way to think about that, and it's how you take control. Maximize your potential. I always tell, I always used to tell young soldiers, what's your potential? What do you think your potential is? You know, can you achieve that? Can you overcome that? Can you do that? And they go, I don't know, I don't know, I've never been able to do that. I said, give it a shot. Give it a try. Go do it. Work a little harder. You know, make sure you get out there and you do a little bit more. That's what I'm asking you to do. My mother taught me to be a lifelong learner. Never, ever stop learning. So I'm, the, message, the message for you all today is as you listen and you walk away from today, you're learning something. And one of the things that, that Lynn taught me was about fear, a little bit about fear. And I always thought that I knew what it was about. All the time of coming and going in and out of combat operations or combat zones, you know, you have a sense of fear. You're not human if you don't. And one of the things that I listened to him one day, and he talked about the brain and the heart. And it's really a fascinating thing, because in the brain, we see something in it, and it causes us, because it mentally says, oh, I'm afraid of that. I'm afraid to go do something. I'm afraid they're going to do something to me. I'm afraid they're going to take the job. I'm afraid they're going to say something you know, nasty about me. Ha! Huh, tell me about it, right? <laughs> so, and that all, that all comes from your brain. That all comes from, because you're overthinking a problem. You're overthinking who you are, what you are as an individual. You're, you're lessening, you're lessening yourself. You're lessening the potential that you have as an American. And what you know to be true, where does that come from? And I say it comes from, and what Lynn taught me is it comes from your heart. And I will tell you one thing. That's right, because when I say it comes from your heart, it's like, you know, the instinct, the hair in the back of your neck that goes up, the gut check or the gut feel that you have, you know, a woman's intuition, a woman's intuition. You just know something when you see something, this is right, this is wrong. I mean, the American psyche, we know what's right, we know what's wrong, and we're watching it, and we're not going to accept it. We are not going to accept it. So what do we do about it? What do we do about it? We have to leave here. So listen to me one more time. Okay, listen to me one more time, especially the women. The reason why I, I, I asked all the women to stand up is because the demographics in our country, the demographics, the, the who we are, the fabric of our nation has shifted in like 30 or 40 years. And women are much, much more involved in the lifeblood of our country. And they know it. The women in this, in this room know it. The women listening to this know it. And so the reason why I single out women is because women are breadwinners. They're caretakers. They're business owners. They're involved in every aspect of who we are. And they're a segment of our society that, frankly, the political class has taken for granted. They've taken it for granted. And when I see some of these great women up here, educators, businesswomen, pastors, all these different people, they're involved. But there's a lot. I mean, when you think about it, I'll bet you, I'll bet you we're probably two-thirds, maybe three-quarters of the people in here today are women. And I'm going to tell you, I, I come from a very strong family. I come from, I have four sisters. My mother was a terrific person. And I know what strong women can do. And I'm telling you, ladies, if you don't, if you don't look at your lifeblood, if you don't look at what it is that's happening in your communities, if you don't look at these beautiful children and the way these children, I mean, you're bringing these children into this world without a mask, right? So why should we have them sit in a classroom when we know there's nothing wrong with what's going to happen to them? So don't allow it. The mo it's the moms that are going into these classrooms to argue. So I want, you to, I want you to think about that. Listen. Get involved in your communities. 
You don't have a choice. You don't have a choice. I have grandchildren. And the main reason why I'm here is because of my grandchildren. If I don't do what I'm doing, and I don't care because they tried to bury me, so they can try it again. And they're going to have to do it much better time, much better job this time. You're going to, you are, you know, you know in this country, you have to get involved. So I'm, I'm making my, this is my thing. This is how, how I'm doing it. This is what I've decided to do. And it's a big, big risk. It's a big risk for me. I will tell you, and because they, they constantly come after you. But like my mom used to say, sticks and stones can break my bones, but names will never hurt me. So the names won't hurt me. Now when they start to do the sticks and stones, I'll be ready for that. I'll be ready for that. So for all the great people that are here, all of you up top, from the bottom of my heart, from my family and I, thank you so much for all you did for our family. I mean, you, the, the American people ran toward my family. They gave us prayers. They gave us everything. And when one woman who told me, when I, when I said, I said incorrectly, I said incorrectly, people with nothing gave me everything. And a woman got a hold of me and said, don't you ever say that I have nothing because I have my faith in God. And so I have my faith in God and I have my faith in you.